That's not happening. That's, that's, that's not gonna work for me, no. When we go silent. Sail away with me and you will see what really matters and what don't mean a thing. Life is better than a dream when you're with me and we'll go sailing. What's up, Gam Fam? I'm Chris. And I'm Mercedes. And welcome back to Building Boy. You're another here for the advice, entertainment, and lifestyle. If you're new here, please be sure to make friends with that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can always see our videos and become part of our Gam Fam. And if you are a part of our Gam Family, then welcome back then, baby. Without further ado, let's jump right in. In today's video, we will be discussing moving in together. These are going to be our top 10 tips for moving in together, whether you're dating, whether you're engaged, or whether you're married with Deke, and we hope that you can find all these helpful. Tip number one when moving in together is knowing your partner's goals for your relationship. It's super important because when you're first moving in, you're so excited that you may forget to have these conversations, but at some point it's going to come up what's next in our relationship. Yep. And you want to be on the same page so that you didn't move in thinking, Oh, we're just moving in, we're just being friends, and the other person thought, no, this is going to progress to something else. So you want to go ahead and cover those topics. And then also consider, if you want to just live together and not progress your relationship, are you open to children? Do you want to have kids together, or do you not want to at this point in time? And also, you might want to, you might be wondering, oh, are we going to get married? Mm -hmm. um, he's been procrastinating so long, you know, I have desires mm -hmm. of getting married, and he just hasn't asked the question yet, but that's something that you have to establish together. And when you go through that awkward circumstance of what's next, um, what does our future hold together? So that's just something that you want to have a common grounds on and make sure you guys have the same goals and the same intention pursuing your relationships. Before you move in together. Tip number two, when moving in together, it's expressing your deepest fears when you're moving in together. Um, I didn't really have fear when moving in with Mercedes. I know Mercedes at the back of my hand, basically. But I feel like we've been together forever. And we got forever to go. So moving in with Mercedes wasn't what wasn't really a challenge, but I would say a uh, quote fear that I had before moving in with Mercedes was me transitioning from student athlete to adulthood. And conquering that whole scheme with Mercedes conquering that whole scheme at the same time because we both graduated college at the same time and moving into our adulthood was really just something that I feared because we really didn't have any responsibilities, you know, with bills, getting a job, and so forth. But we conquered it together and we stayed strong and we survived. Yeah, and some things that you could be discussing with your partner beforehand about moving in together and the fears that you might have are I have the fear of losing myself in our relationship because we're always together. That, that, that could be a fear that you're discussing. Or you could say I have the fear of not having time to myself, not having my own things, or losing my ability to be created in my own way because now you're sharing a, a literal space, like even the space behind us, Chris and I came up with. So that could be a fear that I'm not going to be able to create and have my space like I want to. So something you should discuss with your partner on what you're nervous about when you're going on this journey together. Moving tip number three. It's figuring out how to make the place your own. And by your own, I mean it has to be Mercedes and it has to be Chris, but then there has to be some us in this, you know? So when we're coming and we're moving together, I remember Chris brought this towel that was very special to him. It was a New Orleans Saints towel that I bought him, but it was a, like, regular bath towel people i mean like <laughs> from the five dollar section <laughs> and chris was insisting that the towels hang over the doors so people could see his nice towels yes sir he also had a south carolina towel that he wanted to drape over the doorway to the house the front door that's right so that everyone could see it that's right, right. and so i was like all right chris that's not happening <laughs> that's, that's just not gonna work for me, no. So I had to say, okay, look, how can I still accommodate things that you want? And clearly these towels, though they're five dollar towels to me, they are special towels to you. That's right. And so how can I accommodate you and put those throughout the house or like put your blankets places that can be on display? And I also wanted to like, well, this isn't just Chris's space, this is also my space. So how can I put my things in a way where Chris can have his things and I can have my things? I know right now on each side of our on the TV. I have a shelf of things that I like to be on display, and Chris has a shelf of things that he likes to be on display. Um, which is funny, like when on Chris's shelf, he has a Hennessy 
Oh, not even the bottle, just the box. Exactly. And he really likes that. And on mine, I have a sand dollar that I found on the beach that I think Chris <laughs> could care less about. But the thing is, like, how do we compromise and blend those two things? All right, Chris wants this. I want this. I think it's really important that you discuss that beforehand so you're not into a predicament where I was like, that towel's stupid, Chris, and I don't think he should hang here. And Chris <laughs> like, well, that towel was important to me. That's right. Um, I'm not really a decorative person. But Mercedes has done a good job of incorporating a little bit of Mercedes here, a dash of Chris there. But as long as I have my Who Dat Nation Saint signs and Fertilades all over the place, where, wherever it's acceptable for her, I'm okay with that. Moving tip number four, creating routines together. I must say that me and Mercedes have done a good job of creating routines together. Um, coming in from college, you know, we used to always eat in our dorms and her, you know, college apartment. Then as we progressed throughout our marriage and our relationship now, it wasn't beginning phases anyway. We used to always eat at the couch and we used to enjoy TV while eating. But now, you know, that we matured and we're at this different stage of our marriage, we try to create a routine where we eat at the table. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have undivided attention, we put our phones up, we make sure that we check on each other um, in regards to how each other's days mm -hmm. were, making sure, you know, do we have any ideas for the future, you know, just to get, or sometimes just to pour our feelings out, you know, just to be that person to just be there for um, each other. Mm -hmm. um, we also incorporate routines where, you know, we look at Netflix. Mm -hmm. Not like that. <laughs> but we like to have our times where we enjoy the office. We make sure that we watch Parks and Rec, or sometimes we might, you know, migrate from the table and sit on the couch and have dinner in the movie. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely all about making sure that we have a schedule. Like I wake up before Chris. Which mm -hmm. in that routine, it works best for us because when you're moving in with someone else, if we shower at the same time, or if, we, if we're doing things at the same time, say you only have one sink in the room that you're sharing, that could become an issue. I know at our first place, we only had one sink. Mm -hmm. Our routine was to go to the gym every morning at 5 a.m. together, but when we came out, we both had to shower and we both had to brush, and we both had to get dressed. Ready. Um, and our bathroom at the time was like the size of this couch, it felt. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, it was tight and we were struggling to make that work. And mm -hmm. now, now, we don't go to the gym early in the morning, obviously because of coronavirus, but I always wake up before Chris. Chris mm -hmm. tells me what he wants to wear for work. I go then get his clothes ready for him. Chris does his morning routine. Then I will give him his clothes, Chris will go to work, and then I'll do my morning routine yeah. and then we'll talk on the phone while I drive to work. But so we have those individual pockets of alone time, like Chris does his routine by himself, I do my routine by myself. But then we have this together routine that yeah. comes to that we can work on together. So creating this routine when you move in together that you, you can both be benefited and do well in a prosper in that situation, I think is very important. Moving in together, tip number five. This is probably my least favorite rule because I like to break it more than Chris likes to break well, this tell rule. Me about it. And this rule is yours, mine, and ours. You need to discuss that beforehand. Yep. And quite frankly, I don't really care what Chris says is his. Yeah. It's all ours. Yeah. But in reality, these are things you should discuss because it could come up and be an issue for you. Um, and our relationship right now is not an issue for us. Chris might put me out soon. I'm not sure. <laughs> But when I say yours, mine, and ours, I mean there are things that can only be Chris's and things that can only be mine. Like I know we would, we don't share toothbrushes, right? Yeah, I hope <laughs> we, not. we don't even share toothpaste. Chris has his own brand of toothpaste. I have my own brand of toothpaste. If Chris started using my toothpaste, unless there was a situation where he didn't have any toothpaste, I would be like, what are, what are you doing? Use your toothpaste, mind your business, <laughs> right? And then there are things that are ours. We share plates and cups and blankets and towels and things like that but that's something you should discuss beforehand because the big one we disagree on are Chris's things because he doesn't like me to wear his clothes but I feel like that's ours yeah it was cute at first but <laughs> I need my stuff now um sometimes I'll look for you know a certain shirt and it's in the dirty clothes basket because Mercedes like to steal my clothes and wear them but entering marriage you know there really isn't no Chris's or Mercedes or mm -hmm. his or hers it's always ours mm -hmm. and that's something that you know I had an easy time really developing but <laughs> you know I you adjust to it you'll get over it but I would say that's something you should cover if you feel very protective of your things so I would say discuss that before you move in together because you might think oh of course I can use this and they might think absolutely not you cannot use that tip number six moving in together is creating a budget 
for your relationship. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's probably kind of awkward moving into you know a relationship and moving in together and trying to figure out what are we going to pay for. Mm -hmm. um, even if Mercedes and I weren't married, I still say that we would have came together and got our financial education together and come up with a financial plan for our financial success. Because mm -hmm. um, we all know that finances and money and expenses can be, you know, it can be a problem in a relationship. So that's something that you want to create a common grounds on, make sure that he has this, she has this, make sure that he has this bill, she has this bill, and just come to a common ground and make sure that everything is to a T. Mm -hmm. So you might decide that you like joint accounts mm -hmm. and you're living together. Lock up there, you can do a joint cash app. One person with a cash app, everyone puts money in the cash app and you use the cash card to mm -hmm. pay for things. And that's a way of having a joint account without have, actually having to do like joint accounts at Bank of America or whatever bank you're going to. Um, and so you could decide to do that. You could also decide that I want to pay half of each bill. Yeah, yeah. That's a situation you could go about or you could decide I pay electric and you pay phone or I pay water and you pay internet, you know what I mean? But whatever you're going to decide on, decide that up front so you're not in a situation later on where you're like, well, I thought that you had the mm -hmm. blank bill. Or, no, I, well, I thought you were doing such and such. Yep. So discuss those things before you move in together so it doesn't become a problem for you later on. Tip number seven, when moving in together is establishing each other's chores. So I think it's good to talk about beforehand. Um, this is something that we did not do that I think we wish that we would have done. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some things that I don't like doing. There's also some things I don't feel comfortable doing. Like I don't like taking out the trash, but I don't feel comfortable taking the dogs out at night time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something you should talk about beforehand. I know Chris will sometimes feel like, oh my gosh, Michelle, why aren't you taking the dogs out tonight? And every night I would say, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and it, I should have been able to, I should have told him up front, I don't feel comfortable taking the dogs out at night time, but I kind of expected him to know that already and your partner's not a mind reader. so I think it's good to discuss what things you either don't want to do or are uncomfortable doing beforehand. Yeah once again you know when it's when doing your chores you know you have to divide and conquer. Um, with that being said we might have responsibilities for this chore and that chore but we also have times where we pick each other's we mm -hmm. pick each other's slack up. Yeah. Um, well one time I might not feel like folding the clothes. Mercedes might um, fold the clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes Mercedes might feel tired after work and she doesn't have the dishes washed. So I'll pick up her slack and make sure that I do the dishes. Mm -hmm. So make sure you know you guys are there for each other and you know tidying some things up. That's um, a responsibility that both of us can do. At the end of the day, we both live here. We're both people who are residing here, and if anyone walks in, no one's ever gonna say, oh my gosh, Chris left this mess, or oh my gosh, Mercedes left this mess. They're gonna come in and they're gonna think both of us are, hey, are, are, are yeah, <laughs> really responsible for it. So I think it's just really important that everyone takes responsibility in this situation because you're all in your both household members. Tip number eight for moving in together is discuss the thermostat settings. Um, I went to visit Chris a lot in Tennessee and it was always cold but I always kind of attributed it to it's cold in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So it's cold in here and he had a roommate at the time. Um, and then we got, we got together and we moved to this house and Chris keeps it so cold. That's right. Plus he puts the fan on. That's right. And then he's like, oh, I want to sleep under the, the world's thinnest cover <laughs> with, with like no socks and like short sleeves. I'm like, you're crazy, it's freezing. So I think uh, this is something that we had discussed before and we've come up with kind of our like, own routines about the thermostat and like the, the temperature now mm -hmm. that are a little bit unconventional. Like Chris and I sleep together, but really not together because it's together. It's together, but I sleep under a massive comforter because I'm freezing and Chris sleeps outside the comforter under the world's thinnest blanket. I look at it like this. If it's cold in the house, you know, you can put some covers on, you know, you can put a blanket over you, you can put, you can add clothes. If it's hot, you can get naked, but after you're naked and you're hot and you're warm, you can't take off your skin. So, that's my defense. I guess that's true. I think the 60s is too cold, and I think like 72, 73 is like normal. Mm. Tip number nine, when moving in together, is taking consideration how you handle your stress. Mm -hmm. um, throughout this relationship, Mercedes has basically been my therapist. Um, we always talk about how I get stressed out about things, how I'm anxious about things, and how I'm worried about things. But um, we try to incorporate devotionals in our relationship where you know we were, in, we were informed that if we're worried about something, we're stressed out about something, or if we're anxious about something, you just got to leave it in the hands of the Lord. You know, if you don't, 
you know, that's on you because, you know, God can, you know, move you through all types of obstacles and with him anything and everything is possible. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And that's something that's learned while we've been, while we've been together, really. Um, another thing I think about when I think about considering how you handle stress is also considering how your partner handles stress. If you're used to being by yourself, um, it's hard to really have like an antsy person come into your space. Especially, <laughs> so most things, I do get stressed and worried about things, but I'm not outwardly generally very stressed or very worried about anything. Chris I was like, you never worry about anything this whole world. <laughs> I worry, but I just don't get worked up usually. Mm -hmm. And Chris is the exact opposite. He gets worked up about everything. Everything, okay? So learning how your partner handles stress and how to get them out of that place. Because Chris really being stressed out, stresses me out. And it's not good for my health. So working with your partner and being like, how do, how do you relieve yourself from stress and what can I do to help you and what can you do to help me? Move in tip number 10. I think this one is my favorite and probably, in my opinion, the most important. Give your partner some grace. Mm -hmm. You're moving in together, whether you're moving to a new city across the country or down the street, it's going to be stressful yep. combining your lives. So when you, when I want that Saints Tower to go off my door, you know, providing him some grace, I'm like, wow, he's really not seeing where I'm coming from, but I'm going to give him some space because he's in a new situation and I'm also in a new situation. So we have to figure out how to grow together and knowing that they don't have all the right answers and neither do you. So allowing each other to grow together, I think it's very helpful. Yeah, just figuring things out together. Make sure you guys move in the same direction. Um, make sure you guys are there for each other's progressions. You know, it's a team and teamwork makes the dream work. So always be encouraging and make sure you're helpful to that person because that will help a relationship last a really, really long time. If you guys want to see more from Building Boy, please click on the video that's playing on the screen now. And if you're new here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video, leave us a comment, tell us what you think, and what do you keep your thermostat set to? We'd love to hear from you. And please, tune in next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to see our next video. With that being said, peace.